Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Mad Mamluks. I'm Mahin and I'm joined by my co-hosts Ismail and Sim. Today's show we are recording from the Houston Dawah Convention in Houston, Texas, and we are joined by Imam uh, Abdullah Daniel Hernandez, who is an Imam at the Perlin Islamic Center, which is a I guess a suburb right outside of, outside of Houston, right? And is one of the uh, is an he's a Hispanic American Imam presiding over a predominantly uh, immigrant community. So first of all, Sheikh Abdullah, thanks for coming through today for us. Yeah, my pleasure. You know, um, so we understand there's, for the second year now, uh, Islam and Spanish, and we had uh, our good friend Mujahid Fletcher on the show about a year ago, um, has is doing a joint, con- like a parallel conference with the Texas Dow Convention. Mm-hmm. It was called Convivencia last year, right? Is it still this year? It's like the second annual Islam yeah, and Spanish? The se- second annual uh, Latino uh, convention. Latino Muslim Convention uh, is titled uh, Leader Evolution, right? Okay. Evolution the, uh, of leader, evolution of leadership. Basically, uh, the conference went into the monologue type of discussion audience to a more workshop type setting. So you have speakers having a interview type presentation. And then kind of a workshop setting where the audience is involved and also uh, and engaged in the topic. So it, 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 it was a new, a new um, addition to the conference. Uh, we have uh, community members that came from Chicago, that came from New Jersey, that came from Pennsylvania, that came from California uh, just for the, for the conference because it's something that is uh, it's it's a national conference, and we try to uh, tailor uh, to the community via the social media outlet and visiting these communities as well. So now when we hold these conferences, community members want to also attend and be part of that experience. Right. Uh, so it's uh, it has been a great great experience, and we have a lot of uh, other shiuch and imams like uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Dermali, uh, attended, so he did a session. Uh, Sheikh uh, Yasser uh, Berjas will give a session today as well. And uh, so we have also some uh, Latino imams. So we have uh, in a session that we're going to do at four, would, it would be with uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Khabir Muhammad, who's a lawyer by profession, but he's one of the first, he's one of the first uh, to begin translating in the Spanish language. So a lot of the works that we have in the English in, in the Spanish language translated in Darus Salaam, those little booklets yeah. are by Abdul Khabir Muhammad. Mm. So he's been Muslim for the past forty years. Subhanallah. He's from Panama. Okay. So we will be doing a joint program about how do we pass down this legacy to our children. Sure. So, so it's a it's a nice um, program, I believe. Right. I know leadership is a topic that's near and dear to Mujahid's heart because I know when we talked to him a year ago he was talking about the whole how he was uh, certified by the John Maxwell Institute and Correct. all that kind of stuff so I think that's like in line with the vision so uh, talk to us a little how's Islam and Spanish evolved over the last like w- what's been new over the last year and a half since we last spoke about Islam so and Spanish basically I mean last uh, last uh, going on two years ago we established the Centro Islamico right and maybe he mentioned that to right. you in the last uh, interview. When we established the Centro Islamico, the Islam and Spanish Centro Islamico, which is currently the, the only uh, Spanish-speaking center, right, in, in, in the nation, uh, but it's not just a masjid. So it, it has a masjid, but it has a social lounge, and it has a studio, which, is, uh, which has a green screen, and we do most of our presentations there. When we did the grand opening, we invited leaders who have been Muslim 50 years, 40 years to join us because we feel that this is part of their efforts as well. We, 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 we want to make sure that we do not discredit, you know, those that contributed some effort in, in, in this dawah and, and, and as, as a continuation and with, with, um, Adding the value that we add to it, alhamdulillah, we establish the center. 
when we did this grand opening, we just we had a meeting with all these leaders, different imams, different leaders, and we had the idea of having the first Latino Muslim conference, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just an idea. The same year, so the grand opening was on January 30th, December, we had the first Latino Muslim convention, which is the Convivencia. Now, alhamdulillah, this coming year, we, uh, Mujahid did a, a leadership, a mastermind leadership training with some of the attendees trying to raise them up because they, they, they are leaders in their own capacity. And alhamdulillah, so these leaders now in the conference, they became the facilitators for the workshop type setting. So they're in different tables. So alhamdulillah, it's, it's bringing, I will say, a new momentum for the Latino Muslims themselves in regards of being contributors, but not just in the traditional aspect of Islam, but in their own way. Some are contributors in relief work. Others are contributors in, in education or in, in, in setting up potlucks or setting up different events. So that it, it creates a whole social, uh, uh, social cultural experience, you know, within, within the, the community. And being in this, in this gathering, uh, for example, uh, this, Past, uh, this month, we had the wedding, uh, of Imam Isa Parada's daughter. Right. right. So when we're celebrating this event, we're celebrating at the center. Right. And all of the attendees are people that, you know, we have a relationship with. And Imam Isa, for those of you who don't know, is a local Houston imam who's a graduate of the Islamic University of Medina. Correct. Right. Correct, yes. So, um, you know, we've been Muslim, I don't know how many years now or? Clo close to 20, I believe. Okay. So the, 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 the thing is the experience of that nikah really gave us the experience, the, the, the feeling of community. community. Yeah. It was, for us, it was like the, our first, for me, it was, this is my niece, right? This is my niece getting married, right? And she requests me to be the witness, right? And then our, my wife and children and, and other, ma'am, Joe Bradford, his family and, and other, so you have a lot of different leaders in addition, community members, not only Latinos. A lot of community members join in because also we have community members that are intermarried. And that's the reality. It's not like one race, other race. I mean, you have uh, an intermarriage uh, a community, interracial community, alhamdulillah. So that experience was was an interesting experience. Myself, having four children, uh, my daughter is about to graduate high school. She's 19. My son just became 17. My other son is 13. My other son is 6. Do you mind if I ask you, um, so Shadid Mohammed on an earlier podcast uh, that we had has talked about, um, the Imam um, Shadid Mohammed has talked about um, the importance of recognizing the African-American experience as central to um, creating a, a, a vital and dynamic um, Islamic community among African Americans. Mm -hmm. And when he was um, talking about that, I didn't bring it up on the podcast, but it, it made me reflect on Ibn Khaldun, the uh, scholar, and his um, discussion of asabiyah mm -hmm. um, or group feeling or group solidarity mm -hmm. in the positive sense as opposed to the negative sense mm -hmm. where you know nationalism becomes something that you um, use as a means of division. He mm -hmm. talked about, Ibn Khaldun talked about Asabiya as actually one of the great um, uh, factors in spreading Islam. Mm. So I wanted to know, you mentioned about the nikah and the significance of this to, to the community, and it, it, it's very moving, and I can see how that would be something that would create a sort of um, feeling of the Hispanic community um, sharing in ritual, mm -hmm. uh, Islamic ritual together. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, I, I, and I realize that that's more of a comment than a question, but can you discuss the, the importance no, of that? No, definitely. I mean, one of the, see, for the past 15 years, uh, you know, Islam and Spanish has been working within the general Muslim community, mm -hmm. within the Masajids. And we had opportunities we also had 
uh, hardships, right? But we still try to continue doing the work, navigating, you know, the hardships to make sure that we achieve the goals. Otherwise, you end up, you know, uh, closing the doors to all these opportunities. And after 15 years, we made Shura. And with in six months, we established the center. When we, before we present, we, before we started working on the establishment of the center, we presented it to the community in Ramadan, in the Niftar, to the Latino Muslims. We usually have a, a, a Niftar for the community. And we presented it to them. What do you guys think? Or will you be interested in having a place? Right? Now, I read the book of uh, Peter Drucker, right? who's called The Father of Management. And in that book, he mentioned something, I will say, in the 50s, which is very applicable, which is that you focus on the part, but you don't lose sight of the whole. Mm -hmm. So it made me think of, we focus on the Latino Muslim community, but we don't lose sight of the ummah. Right. So you, you still have that, so when we presented it to the community, we presented it in that way. Yes, this will be a, a central place, but realistically, not everyone is going to live near the Centro Islamico. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you're going to have a masjid nearby that we want you to also be a part of, to be a contributor, to bring something to the table. Mm-hmm. So that so presented it in that way, because in the beginning, once we established a center, some People were saying, isn't this breaking off from the community? Isn't this, you know, we said, no, I mean, uh, we have, we have in unique, uh, needs and the cultural elements. I mean, the, the subject of culture in Islam is a big ch- chapter, a big subject in Islamic jurisprudence. So, Al-Urf Muhakkama. Yeah, Al-Nam. Al-Adam al- al- Muhakkama, correct. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so that, that situation is, you know, that, that topic is such, uh, such a great importance that to just brush it off and, and say, you know what, you know, you, you should just blend in with the, with the whole community. It's not, it's not right. And that's what causes more division. Mm-hmm. When we go the other extreme and say, no, it's just for us, by us, you know, we don't need to deal with nobody else. For us, by us, like FUBU? <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is, right? <laughs> right? That's what I mean. I, you know, I, I never ride FUBU. I used to ride Timberland, but still. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, but, but the concept, you know, the concept of, you know, of that mindset, you know, either one way or the other, it's, it's not, it's not the reality in America. The reality in America is that we're diverse. You go mm-hmm. out to the mall, it's diverse. You go to the hospital, to the clinics, hospitals, it's diverse. So we have to just... It, it, it reminds me of the ayah which we have a So there Allah is saying He created us, created us into different nations and tribes. And a lot of people want to tra- uh, tra- uh, like use this ayah to to sort of support almost like annihilating cultural differences, mm. but it's not. Allah is saying He created us in this way, and He created us with different. And he languages. gives you the objective, right? Right, it's it's out of out of Yeah. So He said yes. we created you like this for this. Exactly. So there's an objective. The same thing, like like when it says in, in Surah the Zukhruf, uh, uh, because you know there is diversity in in race and there's diversity in there's diversity in, 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 in wealth, right? Variation, mm. uh, in different professions. So in, in the chapter of, of dealings, when, when it mentions the ayah, وَرَفَانَ بَعْدُكُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْدٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْدُكُمْ بَعْدًا سُخْرِيَةً Right? So we, we raise you in different degrees, right? So that you can take one another and serve one another. لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْدُكُمْ بَعْدًا سُخْرِيَةً Right? سُخْرِيَةً from تَسْخِيرٍ so this khidma, you know, is so basically the, the employer needs of the employee, the rich needs of the poor, the poor needs of the rich, mm. the doctor needs of the patient, the patient needs of the doctor. There's, there's, a, there's a transaction, right? Mubadala, right? There's a transaction that, that, that's, that's bringing what, 
was what, what all Islam came to bring, which is benefit, right? So the same thing, the more, the more, and this, this, there's so many books on this subject, and that's why uh, on the subject of cultural intelligence, yeah. the more you know, you know, when you spend time getting to know a culture, you become, become more tolerant, you become more, I mean, you, you g- begin to see Islam in so many different angles. That's why, I, I mean, I love when I gave the khutbah in Rockford, uh, Illinois, uh, a few, uh, two months ago, I had to tell the community, I said, Look, when I accepted Islam, I became a view. You became you know, what? I became a view. I became, you know, I made dua for, 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 for Philistine. I made dua for Afghanistan. Made dua for Syria. Made dua. I, beca- I didn't see no colors. We we're Muslim, right? And that's, that, that experience, you know, uh, made me feel like I'm part of this bigger community, which is a global community that's beautiful in its uniqueness. And it's diverse. So coming in with that understanding made me, when I go attend a particular wedding, I will enjoy that, enjoy that food, mm. enjoy the meals, right? Enjoy the experience. Enjoy the experience. So then when you come and you discuss and have conversations, you know, I'm hanging out with an older uh, uh, the uncle, right, from, from, from Bangladesh. And I know his favorite breakfast is what dal, right? Dal <laughs> with... Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that kind of a, being able to, you know, going to, uh, uh, you know, dealing with Moroccans or dealing with, uh, talking about all these different food. People love food. Yeah. Right. But just the whole experience of being able to know others, you know, so this, this goes to the point of, of diversity and dealing with the community. There's a, a recent book called, um, From Mecca with Tolerance by, uh, Sufyan Jemukhov, who's a Chechen Muslim. Mm. And he's a professor and he did a study about how, um, Muslims who go to Hajj come back and have been shown to be more tolerant of non-Muslims, of other religions mm. than they were before they went, mm. even though they've become more religious because, um, they have, be- they've interacted with uh, Muslims of all different varieties and different medhabs mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that type of thing, and so they tend to be um, be more tolerant sure. of, of others. And it also reminded me of uh, uh, Malcolm X when he mm. went on Hajj and he talked about sure. how he saw this great variety of of Muslims, you sure. know, from white to uh, Chinese to African, and he came back and this transformed him from being, um, you know, uh, uh, very. Uh, uh, resentful and 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 harsh and and um, whatever to be more tolerant. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so Sh- Sheikh Danny, are you Puerto Rican by ethnicity? Yeah, my parents are from Puerto Rico, from okay. the west of of the island. Okay, and uh, so basically, I consider myself a New Yorkian. Okay, born in New York. Okay, and my parents are from Puerto Rico. So you are you like an East Coaster originally? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So talk to us a little bit about your background as far when you. Obvi- like so, Mujahid's story was very like ideal, ideal from his point of view. He talks about he converted, then his dad converts like what three months later or something, and his like mom yeah. converts, and then all this. Uh, what was your? Because Puerto Ricans, I've understood to be they're a very proud, they have a very proud culture, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And like you know, we're like Arabs in a sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, right, we have that. that <laughs> Yeah, we have the the, the roots are there. From yeah, Al-Andalus, so. yeah. <laughs> sure. So I, I so I, I would assume when you know one of like from your parents' perspective or from your siblings or your your family when you convert to Islam, they're they're probably like, yo, what's going on? You know, what, what kind of reaction um, are you getting? And when you're even considering converting to Islam as a as a Latino, um, what's going through your head as far as like the culture, like you know, trying to accommodate the culture and all that. Basically, I mean, when uh, growing up in in the Northeast, I I was in a point of of my life where I was looking to get socially involved, right, with social ills, and I was looking for groups and I was looking for different avenues, and I ended up joining a group that ended up being a gang. 
Would, do you mind saying which one? Which one? That we keep it on a DL. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we keep, we, we, okay. You know, and unplugged because it's a it's a life and death situation. You know, and uh, sure. You know, the ignorant don't understand. You yeah. know, the 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 trajectory. So. You know, I have too much to live for. <laughs> sure. not, not, not out of fear, alhamdulillah. I think those of us who have some uh, some experience in the street know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I value the work, the work, the, the work in, in Dawah and Islam and my family. And so I, I really don't, uh, don't see it necessary. But when I, when I see people from the same gang, I'll, I'll step up to them and talk to them. And yeah. alhamdulillah, one of them, you know, I helped them. He would drive his mother. Mujahid knows he, he his brother accepted Islam and he was in the in the in the opposite gang as Mujahid in the past. Mm. Right? The opposite gang, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy got shot in the face with a with a sort of shotgun, right? Right. So he's, he was really messed up, but he accepted Islam. Like close to two years ago, he passed away. Mm. So we conducted the ceremony. His other brother accepted Islam, and you have a lot of non-Muslims, right? Uh, and even I mean, a lot of people that like. Talked out, right? <laughs> and but we conducted the service. Now his mother also afterwards accepted Islam, right? His mother needed a ride, so he, she actually lives near my masjid. Mm. So she would go to the center sometimes, but to the center Islamico. But out of convenience, they would come to my masjid sometimes. So her son, who's part of the same gang that I used to be in, drops her off, and he comes with rocking the colors. So uh I This is another up. son that's alive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I knew I knew because his brother told me that his that his brother's part of the same gang. And he's always always was trying to teach him about it. So this is a national look gang because you're talking about your experience yeah, in New yeah, York yeah, yeah. Big, and they're still rolling time. in Houston. Big time. David, yeah. okay. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to figure out which gang it is. Yeah. 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 He wants to join <laughs> if I give you a hint, if I give you a hint, you'll be like, got it. Like, yeah, all right. No, I'm not gonna. Oh, that's cool. You guys are too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's shy time, right? So, um, oh no, I know now. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, <laughs> so, so this guy, this guy comes up and and he he comes, he has the beads, and I'm like, let's go to my office, let's drink some coffee, some tea, some chai, right? Because we have the 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 maintenance guy in the in the message is very hospitable. So he made some nice chai, and I asked him how long you been in the nation. He's like, he's like yeah, uh, and as we were, uh, yeah, as we were as we were discussing, he was like um, several years. And then I told him, you know, I was um, you know I was ranked number four, right? So we started talking on that note. Mm. So I started asking him about his family. I started telling him about my, you know, the, 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 the blessings of being stable, right? Right. Uh, for the past 18 years, you know, with no headache, having my wife and children and so on. And he was telling me about his financial struggles with his work. So I said, what do you do? So this is now you come the imam job, right, of right. trying to figure out. How can we help this individual in his life? Mm. So alhamdulillah, I positioned him. He, he worked in a, in, a, in a car wash and detailing. Mm. So I said, I know a community member nearby who's a manager of yeah. a car wash. Let me hit him up yeah. and see if they need someone. He told me, yeah. And then I called the brother. The brother said, we, uh, we need, and he's from Trinidad. Uh, the brother said, we need someone. I, okay, send them in. Send them in. He got the job. Mm-hmm. Right, he got the job. I, you know, I went to Puerto Rico, came back, and then I found out that he's getting promoted. He's becoming a manager in that place in several months. Right, and then he was trying to hit me up for the past uh, month or so, and then I find out that he went to the Center Islamico. Wow. He talked to Mujahid, and he said, "I woke up today and I put my brother's boots on." Wow. You mean the one who passed away? Yeah. Wow. Like literally put his like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then he went and made shahada. Mm. So 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 how we all complement each other. Sure. Right. Yeah. If there wasn't a center, there's not a place to go. Right. Right. If there wasn't a relationship, the the we have 
helped his brother, I mean, in Mujahid and Islam and Spanish for maybe more than 13 years, right? right. Before he passed away. Mm. So that kind of imam type of helping out, he needed rehabilitation. You know, what can we do when, when not many imams knew what to do when right. somebody's an addict? How do we deal with them? Mm. Lock them up in a room. What do we deal with them? Yeah. When somebody's thinking about committing suicide. You know, that real life stuff is what many people who are not getting paid are doing. So let me ask you this. So it, it sounds like people, when they are going through this transformation, their family sees it too. So the family's not going to give pushback. The family doesn't just see them converted to Islam. They see them, they're reforming their life. Yeah. So that, that, so I wanted to get, so that, that's a similar story. If you see Mujahid, similar story as myself. So for example, when, when, when I, uh, in 19, I'll just give you a, a, a glimpse of my contact with Islam, right? My contact with Islam. And then, uh, what, what led me to begin to search to begin that journey, right? So the first, the contact with Islam, the first, I will say, was the NBA. Like the National Basketball Association? Yeah. Uh, okay. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, mm -hmm. right? I used to love Chicago, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Used to. Even though you were a Knicks fan. No, no. At that time, Jordan <laughs> was like, yeah, that's it. There's, nothing, there's no, you know. The Knicks had some. He was, he was one of the few smart New Yorkers. The Knicks yeah, had some dope yeah, teams yeah. back then, I though. I love Jordans. I mean, they didn't have yeah, no they nice, they didn't have no nice beat. Knicks sneakers. They, they had the Jordans. So, <laughs> yeah, the Jordan. But what happened was, um, Jordan retired, right? Right. So we're left like almost homeless. <laughs> no, no favorite player. Like, what are we going to do? So I started looking for players, and I pick, and I I didn't want to pick a player that I couldn't emulate. Right? I used to love basketball, you know, being five seven. Alhamdulillah, I had the 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 ability to grab the rim, right? So, Mashallah. yeah. So I used to go to high school with my weights, you know, all day, and then mm. after school play ball. So Alhamdulillah, I wanted to find a player that wasn't like just a superstar, but that I can emulate right so i found one his name was chris jackson mm. right mm. and then he became muslim that same year and he changed his name to mahmoud abdul rauf mm. right so alhamdulillah i was collecting the basketball cards because the only information that i got of him mainly was from the cards because during those years we didn't have Many NBA channels. So, okay, so in context, timeline. This is when Jordan retired the first time in '93. Yeah, correct. Right, right. Okay. Oh, right. Well, the rest of us became Hakeem Olajuwon fans because he was uh, Muslim. Okay, we're we're going that route. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys, he was an uh, Hakeem was an enemy at, for me at that time, uh, okay. right? Because we're, we're going that route. There's this, <laughs> the New York comes into play. Don't worry, <laughs> we're, we're bullies. <laughs> it, it's, you know, so I told Hakeem, Alhamdulillah, with all the respect. I told him I didn't like him back in the days. <laughs> and uh, he was shocked, right? But we'll get to that point. But um, so I didn't get to watch games. I mean, because you didn't get to see many games of the Denver Nuggets right. on TNT or, uh, or these channels. So I decided to, to pick a player. I mean, I, looking at the basketball cards in the back, there was always information about the players. So he said, uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf accepted Islam in 93, went to pilgrimage, changed his name, and this is the meaning of his name. So the card is teaching me about Islam, hmm. yeah. right? I wasn't interested in it. Yeah. It was just curiosity because if you like a player, you want to you wanna know about his yeah. whole lifestyle, right? So then I'm like, you know, I'm not going to be able to ca catch games. Uh, I mean, I, j I need to pick a local team that I can follow. So then I'm like, Jersey, New York. I'm like, nah, Jersey's whack. I'm, with all due respect, I was raised there, but I'm from New York. So I was picked, it Derek uh, Coleman uh, there back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, 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 Petrovich. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Petrovich yeah, yeah. died and, um, and, um, yeah. and Keith Van Horn and others. Yeah. So I picked the New York Knicks. Then there was a player who became the sixth man of the year. Who is that? That's the test now. Now I'm a test. Larry Johnson? Nah, New York. No, before, before Larry. Oh, uh, Derek Harper? Uh, nope. Out of New York. Close. Very close. Close. Hubert oh. Davis? Nope. Close. He, he, Is he a guard? Shooting guard. Shooting guard. John Starks. So Starks, Starks, Starks started. He was six man. He was six man? He was, that year was six man of the year. Mm. Yeah. 
And then he, he was six man of the year. He made it to the All Stars, and that's that's the year that he dunked on Jordan and Grant. With all the respect to Shy Town, yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> right? that. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that's the only one. <laughs> that was the last time, but it became a poster, and it became all this drama. And even though it wasn't like directly, yeah. it was just the angle that they caught the picture yeah. as well. I'm just being being just. <laughs> yeah. I'm Muslim. I can't be. <laughs> I can't be. I was biased back in the days, and we, we claim many. Kind of, you victories, know, victories. Yeah, they, yeah. Didn't, they didn't get to so win how the did I, Eastern Conference Championship. So that, so that year, that year, uh, New York went to the finals with Houston. Yeah, and my my brother was cheering for Houston, and I was cheering for New York. Why was he cheering for Houston? Because he liked Hakeem. Okay. My, my, see, my brother's taller than me. He's six two. Yeah. So for me, he used to try to imitate centers. Right. <laughs> he used to imitate uh, guards. Right. right. <laughs> And I used to admit to guards that used to dunk on him sometimes, you know, <laughs> with all due respect to my brother. But alhamdulillah, um, that year, watching Hakeem play versus the Knicks who were bullies and he, him containing himself fasting during the playoffs, uh, patient with all the trash talk of the Knicks. You know, left a little imprint in me, like, mm. like, wow, look at that character, right? How he, and then he blocked Starks. Yeah. <laughs> and Houston won the championship. Right. So he blocked my favorite player. So <laughs> I, you know, he was like, I didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so alhamdulillah. So then after, so that, that, those are some of the seeds. You should have hated Robert Ory. <laughs> Se- yeah. Seeds is a really interesting, <laughs> uh, term to use because I think all of us who converted, we can point there was you know it wasn't necessarily some like big da da thing it was like seeds planted here exactly and, and you don't know like so I wasn't when I was in high school I came across um, when when I was looking I, when I was uh, collecting the cards of Abdul Rauf I was in high school I would go to a study study a study hall we had study hall so mm. we would go to the library I would go to the library and I began to read mm. and I began to look for books on Islam. Oh. And I took the, there was a, a book that had some of the small surahs. Yeah. And I wrote them in a notebook. Right. And I took them home. Right. And I printed a picture of the Kaaba. Right. Wow. Right? And I wasn't interested in Islam. I was just interested in this this, uh, this player's way of life. Sure, sure. Wow. And it's, so, it, 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 so I had this in my house. Interesting. And, and But I wasn't, that's 93, 94. Mm-hmm. I became Muslim in 99. You understand? So it happened that now uh, another um, when I was in when I wanted to get socially involved then uh, that's when I got involved with that gang and one of the members was very, was very uh, dedicated and he loved to read. He was raised in a shelter but he was raised by a single mother but he became a valedictorian mm. in high school. So he had this passion for reading. So one, he needed a place to stay. And I asked my mom, you know, can we, can, you know, can he stay in the house? He said, sure. So he brought with himself um, a box of books. And in that box was the autobiography of Malcolm X. So I saw it. I read it. Mm. And it gave me a sense of, you know, hope for change right right when when i was in a, in a point where i didn't know what's my purpose in life yeah. so as i'm reading that and then we we went to a public library and he wanted to get books and i mean i wasn't interested in books because i never had a teacher to inspire me to read right i had teachers that would tell me you're not gonna make it <laughs> so at the end of the day i would rebel yeah. And I would make sure that that teacher would leave their job. Like, they won't last a year. <laughs> right? They were, you know, because every day was a difficult day for them. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't tell a student you, you're not going to make it. I right. Mean, that's not, that's not even, uh, it's not right, basically. So, in, we went to the public library and my friend checked out the maximum number of books in this library. Once you check out the maximum number of books, you can't check out books till the following week. As we were walking out of the library, he comes across the, the Abdullah Yusuf Ali uh, commentary of the Quran. 
And he says, oh, the Quran. I said, what do you know about the Quran? He said, I heard by uh, such and such uh, brother who's a, he has a big position in the gang. He said, I heard that it has wisdom. I said, then why don't you read it? He said, I can't till next week because I checked out the maximum number of books. I says, but you, you really, really want it? He's like, yeah, yeah. I said, okay. So I stole it for him. <laughs> right? okay. So the first Quran that I put my hands on was, uh, is before Islam, right? There's a hadith that Islam deals with everything that's before, so don't worry. <laughs> people ask me, like, did, did, people ask me, did you give it back? I'm like, can you just leave it like that? Like, <laughs> You know, yeah, I did give it put, back. Putting your scholar hat on, um, <laughs> would this be the, 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 the hand being cut off for this? Or, or? I, I think, it, uh, you know, the, the, the pen is lifted okay. <laughs> <laughs> on the person that doesn't know until he knows. So I didn't know, right? So, subhanAllah, the, so I, I took it for him, and I was a loyal friend. I thought he really wanted it, so I got it for him. Time passed, and he left my house. And the Quran stayed in my house, right? Fast forward, 1998, we used to attend the Puerto Rican parade in New York. We used to march, right? Mm -hmm. And the day after, you know, two of, just so you can understand, in the gangs, it's similar to congregations, right? In congregations, for example, look at Ramadan, right? And look at the day after Yom, Yom Al-Eid. Right. How is the Maghrib or Isha that night? Yeah. And until months to come, until it picks up again. So in the meetings, it was similar. When it was sunny, 80, 90 degrees, you have 80, 90 people outside hanging out coming to the meetings when it's snowing 24 inches of snow you have a handful five outside in the snow still holding down the meetings still committed right so i was one of those few that would attend meetings you know 24 inches of snow <laughs> you know feet inside and out you know and being in that kind of environment there was a few other brothers that also were with me so on nine in the day after the Puerto Rican parade, two of those brothers got killed by the same gang. Like a rival gang? Same gang. The same gang? Their, same their gang. own gang. Same their gang. own gang. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you come in, I'm working and I see in the news that there's 11 individuals that were locked up. And a lot of them I know. Yeah. So it shocked me. It, it made me really reconsider the relationship like if that happened to them I mean these are these type of individuals that were in meetings right that were dedicated and it happened to them then I'm dedicated it can happen to me so I began to to kind of lose trust in that in that um, in that group I mean I didn't lose um, my belief in the cause of of serving like the the people, but at the same time, I felt that it was it was risky. So I began to ask myself, then who do I trust now? Right? Who do I turn to? Who do I ask for help? Now, just to give you an interesting background, my mother before marrying my dad used to be a nun. Okay. Okay. So she had questions. She was inquisitive, and left the convents because. Once you went to the hierarchy, they said, you just got to believe. Right. My, my mother also was a nun before she met my father. Wow. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. See? Yeah. You got a new story now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that, so, so my mother always taught us to be, to be open-minded. Never impo She brought us up very religious, waking up prayer before meals, prayer before going to sleep, prayer. So we had that. I mean, a lot of my father's character, I mean, you look. You read like the story of the prophet. It's like that. Like he would help my mom. He would on the day off. Mm. He's he's cleaning the house. He's not being asked to. He's washing dishes. He's cooking, cleaning the bathroom. He's just like, you know, involved. Like well, let's go play baseball. Let's go 
you know, Dad, you know, before you go to sleep, can we just play NBA Live? And he would just play, even if he's tired. He would just play, and we would play games. So we had that relationship, intimate relationship within the family. So now when I'm here looking, I'm like, my but my mom is not going to be able to help me get out of this situation, right? At that time, I was a little bit, I was addicted to alcohol and mm-hmm. cigarettes because of the environment. You know, you, you end up starting using it and, and it becomes, you know, it becomes a, a habit. So now I'm trying to get myself together. So I asked my mom, I said, mom, who do I ask for help? Do I ask Jesus? Do I ask Mary? Or do I ask God? She said, ask God. I said, okay. So, you know, I went to a room. I made sujood and I asked God. I said, God, you created me. You know what I need better than I do myself. You choose for me the right way, I will leave everything behind. And I will not look back. At that time, at that time, I used to um, also sing in the clubs in New York, like Spanish rap. And in those years, it was illegal in Puerto Rico. If you had, it was called underground music. Okay. If you had, if you played it in the car and the cops stop you, they'll give you a ticket. All right. So I used to sing in, 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 in New York clubs and New Jersey clubs, but the songs were mainly like social activism type of, yeah. I didn't like that, you know, just singing about girls, singing about clubs, singing about money. It was more about problems. Fighting and, the police. Yeah. yeah. No, Is that why it's so much legal? I think that's it, what... It, the, no, it existed. I mean, it existed. I mean, it's always existed. But, the, you know, those kind of, you know, uh, governmental corruption and different types of yeah. issues that exist. And also individual issues as well. You know, uh, cultural issues that, that we, you know, sometimes are focused on. The outer problems, where we have a lot of inner problems that we're not really addressing, uh, acknowledging, and sometimes that's the the, mo- the priority that needs to be so looked at first. You're interested in more meaningful things than the ordinary person, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, I I just I value life, I value people, and I like to find solutions to problems. That's like the mindset that I and I find it that this is a lot of what Islam calls to. Like, not the problems are there. They've always been there. It's not new. Like, there was prostitution in Mecca. There was all these things that are, existed. So it's not something that is just happening in the West, in sure. America. Like, you know, people will say, oh, you know, don't go to the West because there's so much fitna. There was fitna before. I- Islam has the, the solution to a lot of these problems. It's just how we apply it, right? Now, when I... Began to search. I started going to different churches. So I got six Bibles and I began to, and I began my journey. So I began to read. And then I read, I started reading the Abdullah Yusuf Ali. And when I read the commentary of the, the verse, uh, al-Mustaqim, show us the straight way. Um, uh, then it said the first step is to, is to find the way, right? And, uh, once you find the way, the second, the second need is that once you find the way, is to make the decision to accept it. And the third need is once you accept it, is to make the decision to stay. Right? Many come, many go. So alhamdulillah, then it said, they had a similar to saying that the right way is like a mountain. When you go up, it's hard. When you make a mistake, you go back down, you start over again. I said to myself, you know, we, we, we live in life always trying to ignore problems, right? If it pops up, we just ignore it. Sometimes we ignore it with some supplemental matters, right? Let me just drink a beer. Let me just smoke a blunt. Let me just, right? Let me just yeah. get away. Ignore it. But what happens is we add more problems. Right. When you get drunk, you might get into a fight. So you had a problem before. Hmm. So now in that fight, you got locked up. So once you get sober, you, the, that problem is still there, but now you have another one. <laughs> Plus the court, there's another one. Plus the charges. 
right? So it just adds up. And then if you try to, let me just, let me just make a quick move to, to, to clear all this up, you end up getting caught. You have right. another problem. And many people, when they're surrounded by all these problems, they think about, you know what, I just want to take my life. Yeah. So were you an actual alcoholic diagnosed or? Uh, not diagnosed. I mean, I mean, I used to hang. I had the ability to hang. And okay. <laughs> so I, 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 hang I, means like putting down liquor. Like, mean, is, is that mean, meaning that, I mean, I used to drink, uh, I would say, 440s a day. Okay. Oh. <laughs> is that a lot? <laughs> 40 ounces. Times. <laughs> 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 Time four, right? Just do the math. And my he was a goody two shoe for a long time. He, he has no idea what the terminology means. Yeah, yeah. So we can start talking about brands and stuff like that. But but the the thing is the the um, it, it was just like drinking juice. It was uh, you know there's other people who would drink and will act ridiculous, will get into fights, will act, you know, will not be able to, I was able to walk straight, right? I was able to kind of enjoy that, that, that feeling. But the thing is, you know, the environment is just, it adds. And once you have an addiction, you want to, you want to add to it and increase and increase the feeling. And it's, it's dangerous because you can, you know, once you start hitting, you know, like hard drugs, then it, there's sometimes no coming back, right? For some people, yeah. so I, I I make sure that I will always watch myself. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was looking into the Quran, I always I, I'm just gonna share with you the the emotional feelings of how I I interacted with the Quran because the Quran for nine months became my best friend, right? So I want to go outside. I want to go drink. Like I really want to just go get a, just want to go get a beard. I just want to go. I just want to go, and I'm and I'm like, no, I will go back in the room, lock myself in the room, and start reading Quran. Mm. And I will stay reading until it killed my desire for like an hour, some change. I would just read, just like, and then I'm like, whoa, what kind of book is this? Now you're just reading the English, right? Yeah, you don't There's know no Arabic, Arabic you don't no. Know yeah, but there's still baraka, but it's yeah. not the same, right? Yeah. But but that's the thing. I mean, because the thing is, if a person really seeks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide mm. that guidance. That's the thing. You know, regardless if we, you know, agree with the translations, don't agree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that, mm. that at the end of the day guides, you know, the individual. He knows what we need better than we do ourselves. And subhanAllah, I was reading and, and he had that impact on me, right? Then I read... I feel like, like, wow, like, I don't want to go drink no more. Like, right now, at, the, at that at that day. Then I come across the ayah in Surah Al-Isra, where it says, uh, in the uh, Quran al-Fajr, right? The Quran al-Fajr is witness. Right? So I began waking up when all my relatives are sleeping. So there's no Muslims in the house. It's just me. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, also a non-Muslim with a stolen Quran. So we would just, uh, so I would wake up, trying to keep it in secret, making sure that nobody wakes up. That it's just between me and Allah, right? So I would wake up, and I would read some Quran, you know, until I got my my uh, spiritual thirst quenched, and then I would make sujood. How did you know about sujood? I just felt to do it. I know Muslims do it, so I would just do it. Even though it was a different Qibla, but I was still did it. Did it. I didn't know the direction. At the time, were you thinking about like I might become Muslim, or you're just like trying to just, Honestly, eat, or no, you just reading the Quran? Just prayer. It was just reading the Quran and prayer. Because so the Bible, when you were reading it, didn't necessarily do it hit like hit the spot, so to speak. No, they had there's, there's verses. I mean, there, there, there's a, there's truth in the Bible as well, and okay. there, there, I mean there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of commonalities that exist. Right, the uncertainty is, you know, that uh, that the Quran gives you certainty because it hasn't been changed, right? right? And and you can just turn back to it. That's the thing. So you can, you don't have to uh, figure out what's uh, authentic and what's altered. So Alhamdulillah, as I read this, I began to wake up in the middle of the night. I will go to after making sujood. I will go to sleep. 
then my parents will wake up, they will get ready for work, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a whole experience that I would say to myself, man, they're just waking up. I already did something. And this is after high school? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm already did something, and they're just waking up. So that feeling of doing something secretly for Allah has so, it gives you so much strength. Right? So it became a daily thing. So I began to do basically the hajjud, right? You're right. The qiyam as an al-Muslim for months, for months. I was doing that. Then I began to take ayahs that I would take one ayah. I would take one ayah that I would read from that the, the section that I read. And that ayah, I would hold myself accountable in the evening to put it into practice. So I would ask myself at night, did I put it into practice? Sometimes I would forget the ayah. I would get really upset at myself. You know, that self-accountability. And, you know, that, that impact that it had, that really, it was, it, see, the, I will say, that's the relationship that we have to have. Sure. The relationship that we have to have with the Quran is, should be a live relationship that's transformative, right? That, that one is, 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 is dealing with the, the Quran in a way that one is seeking the guidance from the Quran and that one is trying to, apply right apply the quran in in one's life so as i was doing that as i was finding these ayats i read ayah about about fasting so i began to fast i didn't know that maghrib existed so let me ask you this like um you had already come to the conclusion though that the bible was altered and you understood i'm just searching I'm still just searching. Okay, so you, just you're not reading. even that, the Quran. Just okay, so you connect I, with it, I, right? Now the the point, the, the 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 reason why, for example, I inclined, I leaned more towards the Quran. The reason is because as I was reading the introductions of some Bibles, I found that one would criticize the other. In the introduction, like the New Revised Standard Version says the King James Version has grave errors. So I'm like, how can one Bible criticize the other, right? <laughs> so when I saw that, when I read the introduction of Abdullah Yusuf Ali, it says the Quran has no human author. So it, it, it was different, right? And the Quran didn't come to abrogate the, the, the previous scriptures. It tells you, you must believe in them, right? But you just use the Quran as a source. Right, the unaltered uh, source. So as I was dealing with the Quran in that way, I began to fast. I began to fast periodically. And that fast, I mean, I would go to, I was still vis- hanging out in some areas, high school, we used to hang out in the corners. And we used to sing in the corners. And I'd go hang out in the corner. But, I had the Quran with me. So people would ask me, are you going to flow? I'm like, no, no, I'm not. I'm just chilling. But I'm quiet. And then they're asking me, why, why are you not talking? I said, what's the point of talking? What's the point of wasting words? And these guys are like, wait a minute. Then the girl, girl's coming by and she wants to give me a kiss. I'm like, no, I, I can't give you a kiss. She, then she's like, wow, you think I'm ugly? I'm like, no, it's because I'm fasting. She's like, okay. So it, I began to feel that I should distance. I began to apply Islam as a non-Muslim, right? I was applying these things and stopping people and, you know, just, you know, get, getting away gradually to the point of being uh, uh, disliking the environment, disliking, you know, the involvement that the pe- in what people are involved. And the more I read the Quran, it gave me the inspiration to want to share it, right? To want to share. And I'm not Muslim yet. I just wanted to share this, the goodness that I was learning from it. And I felt that, you know, it's like when you read the autobiography of Malcolm X, you see how it was impacted. But at the same time, 
Now you you're getting it from the source. Yeah. So you get what Malcolm X got, but you got what many others got as well. You understand? So it's like it's so and 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 there's something in it for all of us that's unique pertaining to each individual because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has that ability. So I spent nine months dealing with the Quran in that way. I read a, I read a, you know, when you when you sing you usually have a clothing line, right? So I used to have like all my clothes was D K and Y. Uh-huh. Right? And it was a little bit expensive, right? I think a pair of pants like hundred and fifty five dollars and a shirt one shirt seventy five bucks. So I um nowadays there's more expensive clothing, but in that time it was a little bit expensive. I read the the in the commentary about the charity that is given that your right hand doesn't know, right? What your left hand that your left hand doesn't know what your right hand gives. So I began to pack up my clothes. I put all my clothes in, in black bags. And my mom is asking me, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to give them away. She's like, uh, to who? And I said, I have a crazy idea. She's like, what is it? I want to see homeless people rocking DKNY. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just want to see. Just want to give it to homeless people. That's it. So I went to a shelter, and I rang the bell, and I did the dip. I left. I ran. Yeah. Right? I didn't want people to know me. Mm-hmm. I just left my clothes. And just walking home made me feel like, you know what? I I didn't lose much. I gained more than what I gave. Right? The, just the aspect of giving something that you love that you're attached to because sometimes we're attached yeah. we're attached to our sneakers we're attached to a particular like hat you're attached to a particular jacket right so to actually give that up you know sometimes it's difficult so for me i gave my wardrobe which i didn't buy but i still gave it away right so th- the fasting the giving of charity the 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 waking up in the middle of the night sacrificing my sleep had an impact to the point that after nine months I said to myself you know I'm I'm Muslim I believe in everything that's in this book now I have to go to the mosque the fasting helped me cut down on my drinking so I went from drinking every day to drinking like every other day and then drinking only on Fridays and then it cu- uh, helped me cut down on cigarettes so I went from smoking two packs of cigarettes a day to also cutting down and so just to the, reiterate the whole time you haven't spoken to any Muslim <laughs> about the religion no. about wow. how to practice <laughs> no, no. this is all you and your relationship with the book Alhamdulillah yeah I would say, is, uh, you know, of course, I mean, Allah's media, guidance. Yeah, 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 there's the media and stuff, but we're yeah, but saying. alhamdulillah, but that's a, the, you know, that that experience, that relationship is just uh, unique, and that's why you know every human being has to make a decision to turn to Allah if they really want to, you know, reach their maximum, you know, potential, right? Because of what better can you get from you know than you know than the guidance from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? So when I Spent nine months, I, I started thinking. I would ask myself, right? There was a time when I decided, you know, I have to go to the mosque. And then I, I chose to go to the mosque on a Friday. The mosque is in the same street where my friends hang out, right? So I've been for the past nine months away from my friends. I'm not going to gang meetings no more. I'm I'm away. I'm just really reforming myself. And normally, don't they? Normally, when you leave the gang, they like they try to kill you, right? Yeah, but it, we, we, we'll get to that point. But, okay. <laughs> but they they didn't try. But I mean, because I had a good relationship, so I decided to go to the to the mosque on Friday, and I'm asking myself. I said, you know, I'm gonna see these guys, and they're gonna ask me where you at, and then the first thing and that they're going to do is they're going to offer me something to drink. I don't want to drink. I want to go to the mosque, but I just got to play it off. So I decided to go. 
I go to the, I go by the mosque. I'm standing in front of the mosque. I see the, and I used to hang out in that area too. I see the, in, in the mosque, the big sign that says, uh, Allah. Did Arabic. you ever notice the mosque before when you used to hang out there? I noticed the word Allah, yeah. but I never knew never what it was. Okay. Never knew what it was. So it was, it, it was in a, I mean, that city is 90% plus Latino. Can you believe that? It's a four floor mosque. That people living nearby it do not oh. know is a mosque. Yeah. Things have changed. Okay. But that's the experience. So this is my neck of the woods, and that's the experience that we had. And that's I the 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 building in front of the mosques, that's where I used to hang out. Drink, smoke, you know, a lot of stuff. Right. A lot you of never dirt. knew that it was a, a no. So now I decide to go, but I'm like, if I go inside the mosque, they're going to call the cops on me because they know me from the neighborhood. You know, coming in with a do-rag, with gold chains, right? Yeah. With Timberlands, <laughs> jeans out. Of course, you know, they're not going to know. You got a nice what, sack going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they don't, they, don't, they don't know what 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 are you are and what are you... What is your interest? So Alhamdulillah, I'm here standing outside. My friend, like I said, you know, came and gave me a, a beer. I didn't want it, but he gave it to me. I said, I'm just going to play it off. I held it. I didn't drink. We stayed in the corner where we used to be. And there was a guy passing by who used to play basketball with me. His name is Muhammad from Palestine. And he passed by. Hey, what's up, Mo? What's up, what's up? passed by as he passed by he went farther close to like a block distance i'm like allah's gonna ask me why you didn't ask him because i wanted to go to the mosque i'm like how am i gonna so i said muhammad he's like what he came back i said i want to go to the mosque he knows me for the past eight years he's like you I'm like yeah why because um, I read the whole Quran and I'm interested in it. He said, "It's you know, it was like after Isha. He said, nobody's, you know, the imams left and let's meet up on Wednesday. So we met up, alhamdulillah. On Wednesday we met up, I met the imam and the imam asked me, um, so how do you know about Islam? And I told him the story, I stole the Quran and he was like, you have to give it back. <laughs> I, I swear, I never seen any man. I never, I never seen any man run so fast. He went in the in the library looking for. Is it this one? I, I said, look, look. Let me tell you something. I said, the Quran has been my only friend for nine months. You expect me to give it up? I said, if I get the same book, I'll give it up. If not, I'll pay for it. So. He found the same version. He was wise. He wrote a dedication in the version because he wanted to make sure that I give the other one back. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I have a relationship with the other one, not with this one. Mm -hmm. I, I might be inclined to, you know what, mm -hmm. I give that one up mm -hmm. and keep this one because this is the one that whose pages I'm, I'm accustomed yeah. to. But alhamdulillah. And that's, but the, the idea of going back to the public library, to the front desk, and just returning the Quran, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Just returning the Quran. They didn't know what was going on. I said, oh, I just want to return this book and just left. They don't know what impact wow. the book had in my life. What interaction did we have, right? How, what transformation did it, did it give me as an individual? So the Quran was my rehabilitation. The Quran was the, the source of patience, because I used to have a short fuse. <coughs> so alhamdulillah, I accepted Islam in 99. Uh, my mom, in the beginning, will say, you got brainwashed. <laughs> and then I'm like, how? You know, you know, nobody taught me. It was just by myself. Then I started coming for Fajr, right? Fajr, I'm coming home. And my mom is in the kitchen and she's cooking and 
I would sit in the, in the kitchen table, read Quran by myself. I didn't never impose it on her. And she said, um, she said, uh, if you're going to sit there, why don't you just read to me? And I said, okay. So I began to read uh, Surah Maryam and then Surah, uh, some aspect of Surah al Imran, right? Selective ayats, right? Selective sections. And uh, Ayat al Nur, Ayat al Nur was, was very, we spent some time on it. Then I got married. I spent months doing the, it became daily, daily reading of the Quran with my mom. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Then I got married. And my mom said, you know, I miss your reading of the Quran. Wow. I'm like, why? She said, because it answered a lot of the questions that I had. And she was a nun. As a former nun. Yeah. A lot of the questions that led me to leave the convent, that that was what the Quran answered these questions. You know, subhanAllah. So now I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? Are you interested in it? Are you? She said, yeah. I said, then, mom, why don't you just complete, perfect your faith? I didn't say change. I can say change. Perfect. Perfect. Because Allah's religion is the same. Is Isa's religion is Islam, Moses' religion is Islam, Ibrahim's religion is Islam. So change what? Right? So when I told her that, I said, it's easy. All you have to do is say two sentences. I asked her, do you believe that there's only one God? Worthy of worship, except which is, yeah. Do you believe that Muhammad is the last prophet? Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus is the prophet? Yeah. Because we dealt with the topics of, you know, Son of God and all these different topics, you know, based on the Ahmadiyya book. Right, the, yeah. the choice, or the the compilation of the lectures, or the debates. So Alhamdulillah. So my mom accepted Islam two thousand and two. Um, once oh. once she start once she started coming with me, in two thousand and two I started the 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 classes in Spanish in the North Hudson Islamic Educational Center. Right, so I started the classes in Spanish in two thousand and two. Uh, the my the teacher asked my, the sheikh. Uh, asked me for a suggestion and we came up with, um, we came up with a program called the Latino Muslim Day. And right now is, uh, I just attended the last, last month, it was the 15th Latino Muslim Day, you know, 15 years in a row. And it was just a suggestion that I had as a new Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Four months after my mom, there was a conference in Connecticut and my mom happened to be in Puerto Rico visiting one of her parents who was sick, who was ill. And uh, Imam Zaid Shakir visited Jersey and he had a program in the, in the Southern Connecticut University. So he invited me and I invited my dad. So I went with my dad and alhamdulillah, he ended up Attending this program from nine to nine, all different type of lectures. Imam Siraj was there, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf was there, Zaid Shakir was there. And at the end, Imam Zaid asked, you know, after hearing all this talk, is any of you, is there any non Muslims here? So two people raised their hand, my dad and an, another lady. And then he, he asked, after hearing all this kalan, do any of you want to embrace Islam as your way of life? And I'm like, my dad is a reserved person. You know, he's always yeah. in his room and he's watching <clears throat> the sports and he's just like, he's social, but just doesn't get out there, right? He's just, he has a nice sense of humor and everything, but that's just, I'm like, my dad's not going to raise his hand. I know him. And I look and my dad is raising his hand. You know, so wow. four months after my, my, my mom, my dad accepted Islam. And then two years later, my older brother accepted Islam. And that same year, I got the scholarship to go to Egypt in 2004. So a lot of plans, alhamdulillah. So I've been, uh, now in this journey of seeking knowledge for the, for the past 
13 years, for the past 13 years. And alhamdulillah, um, being able to, uh, are about to complete my master's with Sheikh Walid Manisi in Minnesota, uh, so the, in, in the Arabic language. So it's a blessing, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings are just always increasing, <laughs> never decreasing. Alhamdulillah, so we, we're just blessed to continue this journey, this story. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. So, um, I, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the project. So we connected like first a year ago, uh, Sheikh Yusuf Rios, uh, I studied some Maliki fiqh with him. Okay, mashallah. Uh, so I've known him for, met him a few years back and we connected. I know you, him, and, uh, uh, Abu Abdul Razak, Wesley, LeBron are on this three Puerto Rican imams, uh, relief project, mm-hmm. right? Um, talk to us a little bit about that. What's going on there? Obviously, we know about the natural disasters mm-hmm. that affected, uh, Puerto Rico. Um, yeah, so before, before the, before the, um, the hurricane, we got involved trying to come up with solutions, all right? And then during the hurricane, we also got involved trying to use Zelo and b- trying to find relatives of, of of people, you know, through Facebook. I began to use the, the computer and, and, and my phone, and I began to go to Hurricane Maria in this city, in that city, and people from that city will talk, right? And, I mean, it was, uh, communication was scarce, or people within the U.S. from that city that got some information will join in. So we, we end up, you know, becoming a sense of hope for people that can't get a hold of their relatives. So here I'm doing this just for the sake of helping. My family, my, my family seeing this, a lot of non-Muslims started joining in. Can you look into this city? Can you look into that city? So alhamdulillah, after the, the hurricane occurred, we began, you know, trying to deal with other organizations as well. And we felt that, you know, it is better for us to, to lead, you know, by example. And that imams can also be on the ground doing the work. Right. And, and then we said, you know, the, these are our people. That's that specific, right? That we mentioned earlier. You know, you focus on the specific, you don't lose sight of the whole, right? So I said, we, we decided to begin to explore the ideas. And, and it was difficult to, because you did it, we didn't know how to approach it. We, we wanted to set up containers. And then we found out that because of the Jones Act, the containers, 40,000 are still not being released. We went, I went last month. The, the Jones Act is, uh, the act that does not allow government funding to go to religious groups is that what it no, is? No, it's or? basically basically it's uh, it, it's for um, like cargoes. Mm. Any cargo uh, ship that's foreign oh. would have to be <clears throat> transferred to a U.S. cargo, okay, and then it will get delivered to Puerto Rico. Okay, but in that business transaction, Puerto Rico pays the fees for the transfer. I see, and, and all that. So now, in in regards of relief, when foreign countries want to help out, all of these containers are sitting, being withheld. Ridiculous. So when when we went last month, we got the first container released, that we 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 partner with uh with 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 ICNA, right, and we this container. Eight pallets, eight pallets of baby formula expired. Oh my god! You understand, like mm-hmm. the 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 aspect of humanity. So we're like, okay, so we're trying to find solutions, but we we didn't have time to to go around different bureaucracies or different like roadblocks. We just gotta do it. So Alhamdulillah, brothers, you know, Imam Yusuf went first, what Yusuf Rios went first, uh, to, to assess. And then, uh, him and Imam Wesley went and they started finding out contacts, finding out how can we take this money that we raised in the U.S., right? And how can we invest it in the island by, by purchasing from, from wholesale outlets or companies that are there? So the money gets raised for the land, and we buy the items in the land, and we distribute it in the land. 
So we have a, we have some contacts now and we joined with other organizations. And I mean, it just evolved to the point of, of us being invited to the Capitol governmental building, right? Us being in, us, I, we, we got recognized in the airport by TSA. And they even let me bring in some stuff that, like, you know, you know, usually you can only bring like, uh, like three ounce bottles, right? Mm-hmm. And I had, I had two eight ounce bottles, like mm. one of, of alcohol, but this alcohol is like a rubbing alcohol with leaves that has come from the indigenous community in the mountains that they gave it to us as a gift, mm. right? And I have it in a big Ziploc bag. And then, and we didn't, we were just busy with doing the work. So I didn't have time to go to Walmart and get the small bottles. And then there was another bottle of honey from the mountains. Yeah. Right. So I told the lady in TSA, the one that's looking at the screen, I said, I have these two uh, Ziploc bags, right? And, you know, can, um, if it's going to cause a problem, you can take it. You know, I don't, the lady, she asked, um, are you guys doing relief work here? Hmm. I'm like, uh, yeah, we are. And she said, and you guys are part of a religion, right? Like, yeah. They, I mean, the, just the concept of three Puerto Rican imams going through the island, people from the indige- from the mountains, indigenous people, like an hour away, saw the van and they stopped just to say hi to us. Right? Just uh, explaining to them what the word imam means. Right? And subhanAllah, so this lady, when, when she said, no, just pass it through. So I passed on, I passed through the bottles. The guy in the other end, you know, he grabs me. He says, "Who does this belong to?" You know, I say, "It belongs to me." But you know, if it's gonna cause any inconvenience, please, you can have it as a gift. You know, it comes from this mountain and so on. And the guy said, the lady said, "Look, next time, just put in small bottles," and they let it slide. Mm -hmm. But they got to know us how because of our because of doing doing the work. So we we ended up. There was a lady. There, I mean, Subhanallah. There was a group from the Ministry of Sci- Ministries of Scientology. They request, can we join you? Do the work. There was an interfaith group, Stony Stony uh, Stony Point Center from New York. They found out about the three Puerto Rican Imams. They wanted to join us. Can we join you? Sure. So we were traveling with them. They, I invited them to my family's village and they, they, they experienced that, that, that experience. They went to the mountains with us. Then there was a lady. Her name is, um, I think her name is Joyce. She was a representative, an advocate for the Pulse Club. Mm. That, the club in Orlando. Yep. Okay. She, and we had a we had a distribution of that center, of that center, uh, I mean of that uh, of the first uh, container, right? We had a distribution, and this lady joined us. She traveled. She said, "I just want to meet the three Puerto Rican imams because she's from Puerto Rico, just to thank them for what they're doing and to take a picture with them." And so I, as I was talking to her, she, she said, she says, and I want to tell you that we believe that what happened in the club pulse does not represent Islam. So she came to tell us that she knows that Muslims are good people. And this because also we're doing now she sees three imams who are Muslim. Right. Who are also Puerto Rican like her, so we relate, right? Doing this work, serving the people, right? And 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 we're not none of us is getting a salary from this. You understand? And, and we all have our own professions, our own jobs, our own families, and we're sacrificing family time. My community is giving me, you know, leeway to go and do this relief work, even though I have responsibilities in my locality. I like all of this uh, work, alhamdulillah. So the, the three imams project right now, we're focusing on long-term projects. So one of the projects that we're working is on 
re- renovating of some homes. So we found a village wh- whose homes, like the homes are like 20 by 13. That's a home. Two rooms. 22 by 13. So half of the house was destroyed. So we, we found a local organization who adopted this village and we, we, the, the Ministry of Scientology volunteers, they, they wanted to volunteer. So now we have three organizations. We sponsored the project, the local organization got the local contractor to work on the project and the, the Ministry of Scientology, they volunteered. So we ended up sponsoring the rebuilding of that home. Two thousand dollars. That's it. Hmm. We got them a generator. Five hundred bucks, and so it was like twelve, twelve fifty, the the items for the house, two fifty for the the contractors for one day, and the other five hundred. So for two thousand dollars, we we rebuilt a home for a family that was a a, a bride, a, a husband, wife. And a newborn child in one room. That's more than the United States government did. So now we're planning to go. I mean, that, the sad thing is that these places, they, they say that for 90 days, I mean, and a lot of elderly are saying for 90 days, you are the second people that come to bring us help. So what can we do with just bringing a bag of food? We spend time with the people. We talk to them. We hug them. And the, the thing is about, remember we mentioned the, 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 the aspect of culture. Yeah. You know, when you go to this place, how do you greet them? Hi, bye, no. How do you say, how do you greet them religiously? Right? You, you, you don't, like, as, I, I don't say to an elder, God bless you. I, I will say blessings. And then they say, God bless you. They make dua for you because they're right. the elders. Right. So that methodology, if yep. you don't understand the culture, you don't know the process. Yep. Sure. So when we come and we say, la bendición, all the elders will say, Dios te bendiga, God bless you. When you have these people praying for you, hugging you, saying, may God protect you wherever you go, may God bless you. I mean, we need uh, the dua. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's amazing. And these people are in need. So the dua of the, uh, of the, of the one in need is accepted. So we felt like we're gaining more benefit than we're bringing to the table. So we have, you know, so we're, we're working on two main projects, the rebuilding of these homes. So we're going to build it. When we go next time, it's take like 10 homes. Right? We already have kind of an idea of what would it take. And another project is to enhance the agriculture in the island because Puerto Rico was 90% plus agriculture. Now it's like in the 10%. It's more industrialized. But Puerto Rico produces coffee, produces a lot of, you know, pineapples, sugar cane. But the, so if we revive the agriculture, then people can sustain themselves. I, I We went to the mountains. People are content. They're living off the land. Maria, you just hit. We went to, they, they served us food 100% from the land. We went to visit them. They cooked for us. And they welcomed us and they said, we appreciate that you are taking the time to come to visit us. We really respect that. And we said, and these are indigenous people. So they have this inner sight. They said, we really, we, we really feel, we really feel your sincerity. We really feel your intent for coming. You're not coming like other people are coming to capitalize on the situation. You are coming for the real reasons. And you know what we say to them? To anybody that we meet, we are committed to this. This is not the only visit. We're committed to So the elderly feel that they have hope. You know, I visited Sheikh Yusuf Rio's family. Now I know his nickname. Now I know his family. Now I feel like I have an extended family. They visited my family. You know, there were like eight aunts and uncles that gathered just to welcome us. My aunt taking pictures of the van that says the three Puerto Rican imams, that kind of stuff. My family is not even just happy to see me. They're saying thank you for the service that you're doing to the land. Sure. How can the greater community, uh, is there anything the greater community can do can help support this project? I think that really with all the different challenges that exist, 
the people have challenges of, you know, re- restoration of their homes. Homes have been inherited. So the people don't have, some of them don't have documents for their homes. So therefore, they can't get no help mm. to restore their homes. Electricity is out in some areas and in a lot of areas. But they're, they're saying for those that don't have electricity, that they would be, that they would have to finance the panels. Where are they going to get money? They haven't been working for the past few months. Where are they going to get money to finance the, the, these uh, solar panels? So uh, we believe that financing, like donating, monetary is, is, is the key for the sake of having a greater effect. I mean, what we, the impact that we had. I mean, we have a lot of organizations that we're working with on the ground, locals, from different, uh, you know, uh, views, different political views, we try to just focus on the cause and overlook the differences. We don't get into political, uh, situations and political agenda. We focus on the cause and we're just really honestly impacting people indirectly without it. We're just serving, but subhanAllah, the dawah impact that it has had in our families. In our families, we are here, people are still distributing our stuff. And they're sending us pictures without us even asking them. They're, 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 they're sending, look, this is what we're doing. We set up a, we, we set up a kitchen, a community kitchen with your stuff. Are you documenting this anywhere? Yeah, we have, so we have the, the, the three Puerto Rican imams, uh, Facebook page. Oh, okay. All the pictures and videos and stories are there. I mean, we'll make sure to put a link to that on. It. Yes, and and also the link there it, uh, for the the PayPal as well. Uh, the the organization it is a five hundred one c. We had to establish it because of the, the you know we got a lot of funding, so we wanted to make sure that there's transparency. Mm-hmm. And our main focus is really just bringing the benefit. Uh, you know, um, that's the little contribution that we can do to the, to our people. At the same time, it's an obligation as, as being Puerto Rican Muslims. But at the same time, it's, it helps the, the, the morale of the Puerto Rican Muslims in America too, that see that also some of the leadership are there on the ground. Mm-hmm. You understand that, that, I mean, we have Alhamdulillah articles that have come out and Alhamdulillah, it's been a, a great, I personally, my personal experience is that in, in that week that I went to Puerto Rico, I felt like I did more Dawah than in 18 years. So amazing. And right now, before we wrap up here, I know you've got some books coming out or you're, or yeah. have come out. Can you talk to us a little bit about the books you've got, uh, that you're publishing? So basically, um, based on the intent of bringing benefit, I decided to, and I love the concept of Imam al Nawi and other scholars of the, the 40 hadith, the 40 narrations, right? And Imam al Nawi wasn't the only one. There was many other scholars that did 40 hadith, like even Shawali Allah Dahlawi and others. So I decided to compile from, uh, one of the authentic, uh, collections. Um, so I compiled from Sahih Muslim, the, Last uh, August was the release date, um, and I was gonna release it on the during the um, yeah the beginning of the Hijjah. Harvey happened, right? I was gonna release release it so the forty hadith of Hajj, right? And Harvey happened. Alhamdulillah. So I couldn't. I didn't want to market the book. I didn't want to. I mean, people wanted to go. You know, they were also going. Going to Hajj, that I'm like, man, I'm not just gonna. It's not the time for that. It's not the time. So Alhamdulillah. But it, it, so we we published that that book Alhamdulillah, and now Inshallah, in this coming month of January, we're doing the second one, which is the forty hadith, um, the forty sayings of Prophet Muhammad on Salah derived from Sahih Muslim. So it's it's a simple, short hadith because many times. You know, we refer people to go to the sources, right? We say Quran, Sunnah. And many times when somebody wants to go, they'll go to Sahih Muslim, they go to say Bukhari. And what happens is when you go and you go to the book of uh, fasting or the book of Salah, you have like 500 hadith. One hadith is like two or three pages. 
And people don't have the stamina to read this much content. So I wanted to facilitate to be able to cover, for example, the Umrah from the Ihram to the Pharaoh um, uh, pilgrimage, the Pharaoh Tawaf. In 40, I did it like Imam al 42 hadith, not 40. You know, just following his way. So I did that 42 hadith. There's only one hadith, which is the, the 15th or 16th hadith, which is the, which talks about the house <coughs> of the prophets, which is like three or four pages. So it's like a little bit more detailed. Alhamdulillah. Now the one about salah, I'm focusing on the salah. There's some angles. One of them is focusing on the salah for the first 20 to 25 hadith. On the salah from beginning to end, right? The, from the takbir to the taslim. Then we'll enter into the position of the imam. And what can you do? What you shouldn't do when you, how you should follow the imam, right? Just to kind of re, reinstitute that position of the imam, right? The, the authority of the imam in salah. And then we'll mention a little bit about the position of the woman, right? From, from Sahih Muslim. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that if, if your, if your woman wants to go to the mosque, don't prevent them. So I relate some of the hadith about the permissibility of our sisters of going to the masjid, of, because sometimes one hadith is used to say sisters shouldn't come to the mosque, right? And so, and then another point is the interaction of the Prophet ﷺ with children during salah. Sometimes we're very harsh with children. Even in Ramadan, you have children come and they're making noise. One major uh, point of consideration is the position of the mosque in the Muslim world and the position of the mosque in America. The position of the mosque in the Muslim world is surrounded by a community that supports each other, right? And the mosque is a quiet place where prayer takes place. Not a, not a needle falls, right? It's just like, you enter Salah, and you go out. In America, we have no community in many places surrounding the masjid. So the community is the masjid. Mm-hmm. The masjid is the, 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 the youth center. The masjid is the social place. The masjid is the noisy place, right? So now you have children coming in Ramadan, making noise. And then somebody is telling the parents, uh, mothers, if your children are going to make noise, please keep them at home. Right? I had a situation. I had a child. I had a child that I was taking care of who was, who was not Muslim, who was in my house, right? Who began to request to pray. He's seven years old. He began to follow us. We never told him. And he was coming to the mosque and he was coming to the Islam and Spanish Center. He spent so such a pleasant time in Ramadan. And now you have somebody saying, leave your kids at home. I'm like, this kid is a non-Muslim who's getting the beautiful experience of the mosque. An experience of no cursing. An experience of Quran. An experience of diversity. So that experience, subhanAllah. I mean, so, so for me, I, I share with the community that children, little children making noise are like, let's say you have like birds flying in front of you <laughs> in salah, little birds. Yeah. What are you going to do to these birds? Are you going to smack them because they're, they're crossing your sutra? Are you going to go like this? And, 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 and clear the birds, right? I'm, I'm saying, like, you're not going to do that. So therefore, I said, these children, why won't we do that to these birds? They're disturbing the salah. Because they're not accountable. These children are like birds. These little children are not accountable. And we have to recognize that fact, right? So taking that in consideration... I selected a few of those hadiths from Sahih Muslim about how the Prophet ﷺ used to deal with children in Salah. And so on with that, 
objective. So Alhamdulillah, inshallah, in April, I plan to uh, have the 40 hadith, 40 sayings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about fasting. Inshallah. Inshallah. Well, Jazakallah Imam. Uh, uh, Sheikh Danny, uh, and I know we got another program you got to attend to, so uh, yes, yes, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Um, for our listeners out there, if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at themadmamluks at gmail.com. You can also like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, give us a five-star review on iTunes. Um, we are here at the Texas Dow Convention, um, so this does not come for free, so we do... Um, this is your, don- some of your donations that work. You can continue to support us at the madmumlooks.com. There's a donate page there. Um, and then we'll have the links to, uh, to Sheikh Danny's, the, the Fort Puerto Rican Imams project in the show notes. Um, for our special guest, uh, Imam Abdullah Danny Hernandez and my co-hosts Ismail and Sim, this is Mahin signing off for the Madmum Looks. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>